My name is Misty Servia. I'm here uh, as Manatee County Commissioner, District 4, and I am so honored to be here today and see the community come out and celebrate Veterans Day. You know, it's a day that we can't take for granted, and I'm so thankful for the Veterans Council for this, putting this program together and celebrating all of our veterans here in Manatee County, because today we're all unified together celebrating those who have served and are serving our military. Thank you very much. Good morning, citizens of Manatee County, and welcome to our annual Veterans Day ceremony. I refuse to let a little rain stop our show today. But for most of you who have lived here in town, remember, this is still Florida. If you do not like your current weather conditions, wait about 15 to 20 minutes and they will change. And as you can see, it has now transformed into a day where a drop of rain never happened. <laughs> for those of you who are looking for a parade, as this council has done in years past, God willing, be patient with us. You'll see us next year back at Sutton Park. Hey. In a Veterans Day speech in 1989 at Arlington National Cemetery, the late General Colin Powell, then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff stated, this nation owes a great debt to its veterans whose service to the nation spans every decade, every year, every day of our country's existence. Through untold courage and sacrifice, America's veterans have secured the liberty which the founding fathers sought to establish here in the new world. Whenever, and wherever the nation has called, in times of darkness and danger, as well as in times of peace and prosperity, America's veterans have been there. Veterans have proudly carried the torch of liberty for all to see. In our country today, where a global pandemic has sought to distance us, where economic upheaval has sought to cripple us, and where political and civil unrest have sought to divide us. This nation, and we the people in it, call for those men and women, heroes and patriots, 
to proudly carry the torch of unity and liberty for all of us to see, for all of us to never forget, for all of us to teach our future generations, for all of us to take a moment and recognize those men and those women who at one point in their lives raised their right hand and said, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies both foreign and domestic. It is for another opportunity to say thank you for answering the call in times of darkness or danger, peace and prosperity for the cause of life and liberty that we are gathered here today. Our nation, our state, and indeed our city can never say to our veterans, thank you nearly enough. Would everyone please bow their heads for the invocation. Gracious and wonderful and almighty God, we thank you that we can see clearly now that the rain has gone. And indeed, it is a bright, bright, sunshiny day here in Manatee County. We thank you that we can take a moment to honor those men and women who have fought for the freedom that we get to live here in Manatee County and throughout our nation and indeed throughout our world. We ask your blessings on this ceremony and we ask that we may never forget to take a moment to honor a veteran, to shake their hand, to hear their story, and to tell them thank you for your service. In some cases, both then and now. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. If you are able, let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by the national anthem sung by Ms. Shaley Plicta, senior at the Manatee School for the Arts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Again, Ms. Shaley Plicta. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the
Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Shaylee, if you would do me a favor and ask your parents to please stand, mom and dad of that lovely songstress, would you please stand and be recognized? We wanted to recognize a couple of our dignitaries on behalf of Chairman Vanessa Ball of the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County. We would like to recognize Commissioner Misty Servia. And a wonderful person who never misses this ceremony, whether we have it in Palmetto or whether we have it here in Bradenton, she is a wonderful supporter on both sides of the bridge. And we hope to be back in Palmetto for a great parade soon. It is my privilege and honor uh, to recognize the mayor of the city of Palmetto, the Honorable Shirley Groover Bryant. On behalf of Lee Washington, Veteran Services Officer at Manatee County, the Manatee County Proclamation for Veterans Day will be presented by Renee Medina, Senior Assistant, Veteran Services Officer. Good morning. Proclamation, Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County, Florida. Whereas, the Congress of the United States of America has declared that November 11th of each year be set aside as a public holiday to honor America's veterans. And whereas the veterans of Manatee County gave their all through service and sacrifice to our country and its continuous pursuit for rights of freedom and democracy. And whereas the veterans of Manatee County express their support of men and women of the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, who have now taken up the mantle of continuing to fight and protect our precious liberties. And whereas, it is proper to honor these veterans who have served with selfless love of country to preserve these United States, its freedoms of democracy, and its inalienable rights of its people, and Whereas the citizens of Manatee County wish to express their continuous obligation and admiration to our veterans found in every sector of society and are the bedrock of this community. And now, therefore, it be proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that November 11th, 2021 shall be known, designated, and set aside as Veterans Day. In Manatee County, Florida, and further that with traditional 11 a.m. Veterans Day services, the period of November 4th through November 11th of 2021 shall be known as a time to support our troops and veterans in Manatee County. And further that the Board of County Commissioners call upon all citizens, schools, businesses, associations, and news media to pay tribute to our troops and veterans by properly displaying the flag of the United States of America, by conducting and attending appropriate ceremonies during such period, and by exercise the freedoms and privileges that so many fought and gave their lives and limbs for. Adopted with a quorum present in voting the day of 26th of October, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County, Florida. Thank you. For the purposes of remarks on behalf of Vern Buchanan, member of Congress, I call upon Sally Sheely, District Director for the Office of Congressman Buchanan. Thank you, Edwin, for the introduction, for your service in the military, and for your advocacy of veterans. It is truly an honor to be here today on behalf of Congressman Buchanan to pay tribute to the brave men and women who have proudly served in our armed forces. Ronald Reagan once said, some people live an entire lifetime and wonder if they've ever made a difference in the world. A veteran does not have that problem. From every walk of life, soldiers both past and present have left their families, their friends, and sacrificed comfort, time, and money in service to our country. 
Veterans Day, formerly known as Armistice Day, was originally set aside as a U.S. legal holiday to honor the end of World War I. Legislation approved June 1, 1954, made November 11 a day to honor American veterans of all wars. Since our founding in 1776, the United States has fought in about a dozen major wars and intervened militarily in hundreds of others. Every generation has seen some form of combat. On this Veterans Day, we offer our deepest gratitude to all who served, living and deceased, but particularly the living veterans among us. Our state of Florida is home to more than 1.5 million veterans, the third most in the nation. Congressman Buchanan has the honor and the privilege to represent a region that is home to 75,000 veterans in Sarasota, Manatee, and Hillsborough counties. Our service members have risked everything for this country. Fighting to protect them and their families is one of Congressman Buchanan's top priorities. And if our office can be of any assistance to you, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you to all our nation's veterans. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Sally, for those remarks, and please give our regards to the congressman uh, when you speak to him again, and he is more than welcome at our council meetings. Our keynote speaker this morning is a retired United States Army Lieutenant Colonel with over 24 years of service with a focus on training, doctrine, and operations. He has extensive instructional experience since his military retirement in 2007. He's an ad, he was an adjunct faculty member at Columbus State University, Perimeter College of Georgia State University, Georgia Military College, the Tampa campus at Kaiser University, and was an online professor of American government for Arizona State University Global Campus. He served five years as a high school senior Army ROTC instructor in both Georgia and here in the Sunshine State. His military experience includes two combat deployments to Iraq, one in 1991 and again in 2006, with additional assignments in Germany, Israel, Kansas, California, Texas, Georgia, Virginia, and Kentucky. He was commissioned in armor from the United States Military Academy of West Point, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1983. So what does a busy guy do here in our happy little town of Bradenton? Well, our keynote speaker today hosts the weekly radio video podcast called Military Matters. If you haven't heard of it, you need to get on it. Military Matters is a radio program whose purpose is to educate and inform the community while honoring those who served and have served the nation in military uniform. Our guest speakers' awards and decorations include the Bronze Star, eight awards of the, Mer of the Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation and Army Achievement Medals. He has been awarded the U.S. Army and Israeli Defense Force Parachutist Badges. He is married to the former Robin Dickens, who retired after 34 years of civil service in March 2013 in Fort Benning, Georgia. They live here in Bradenton, and he is the father of three adult children, John, Stephen, and Caitlin of Wichita Falls, Texas, a stepson who lives in Kentucky and is the proud grandfather of three. For the Manatee County Veterans Council, he has come into this place like a whirlwind and has shaken it up a bit and has become our Legislative Affairs Committee Chairman. If this man, if there is something going on in the military side that affects this community, this man is on it. My fellow council members, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me your guest speaker for, these, uh, for this proceeding, Kevin W. Wright, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army, retired. Uh, 
Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, be brief, be gone. That was the sage advice that the Manatee Veterans Council gave me today. Hey, the rain is gone. Yeah, about high noon, 12 o'clock high. We'll all be gone from this site, uh, so I can be true to that. Actually, I'm old enough that many years ago I had to start wearing reading glasses to read. But I'm young enough that my pride says I need to avoid having to wear reading glasses. So uh, there's a lot of pages here, but it's really big print. Right. And hopefully it's worth your time to hear what I do have to say. As a student of history and a veteran, I enjoy reminders how today came to be important to our nation and to make sure that we all understand why we are assembled together this morning. On this day, in this month, at the hour of 11 o'clock, our nation remembers the moment when the guns of World War I went silent, and we recognize the service and sacrifice of our nation's veterans. From Valley Forge to Vietnam, from Kuwait to Kandahar, from Berlin to Baghdad, from the war on terror on our own shores and abroad, our veterans have borne the cost of America's wars. And they have stood watch over America's peace that each of us enjoy today. On this Veterans Day, we give thanks for the nearly 15 million Americans who strengthen our nation with their example of service and sacrifice. There are 5.9 million American veterans who serve in Vietnam, and there were 7.8 million who served in the Gulf War, spanning from August 1990 to today. There are about 240,000 World War II veterans and about 933,000 who served during the Korean conflict. We have a few of them here today. Our veterans are drawn from many generations and from many backgrounds. What is a veteran? Or more precisely, what makes a veteran from a veteran's perspective? A documentary I watched just this past week answered that for me. And what I'm sure sounded odd for most, but every veteran here will understand. It was in the words of a soldier reflecting on his service in Vietnam. He said, I served with many during my tour whom I did not like, but I loved every last one of them. When my tour ended, I went home with no desire to stay in contact with almost all of them. But to this day, Decades later, if any one of them reached out asking me for help, I would drop everything in a heartbeat and do whatever it took to be by their side. We all would. That is what it is to be a veteran, to love unconditionally and without end. There's about 100,000 veterans on the Sun Coast, and about 40,000 of them reside here in Manatee County. Sun Coast has one of the largest veteran populations in the state. Nearly 10% of our population have served, and most, like myself, are not native Floridians. Nationwide, only about 7% of all adults have served, and that number has and will likely continue to be on a steady decline. That's a good thing. It means that we're no longer sending our sons and daughters off to war in the numbers that we have. Many suffer emotionally, physically, and monetarily. Many live without a home or a shelter. The dozens this community served at the annual stand down through turning points this past Saturday represent a fraction of them. At least those that attended and were served on Saturday know they are not forgotten. Our community has its fair share of reservists, National Guard and active duty or family of those still serving in uniform. And we seek to honor all of them as well. They represent our nation's greatest treasure, citizens willing to put country and their fellow countrymen and countrywomen ahead of self. For what purpose have they and I have served? In its purest and most fundamental essence, the purpose of a military force is not to destroy life, but to protect it, to protect the lives of the citizens of the nation so that they may live in peace and security. The ultimate purpose of the military is to protect the lives of the citizens and of our nation from aggressor nations who would rob us of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
This purpose is entirely consistent with and actually flows from the highest Judeo-Christian ethic, that what protects and enhances life is good. That which destroys and degrades life is evil. Our children and all Americans must understand that the veterans we remember and honor today are the embodiment of the spirit which has guided our nation for nearly over 300 years. The spirit has and will continue to keep America free. The United States military is one of the most trusted institutions in the United States, with 72% of the public having stated their confidence in it. This level of public support comes after heavy involvement of the United States military, primarily in the Middle East. This positive view is inspired by the sacrifices required of our countrymen and countrywomen. At times, this has included the ultimate sacrifice. Of our American military force of 1.4 million in uniform and 735,000 civilians, over 233,000 American service members and 66,000 civilians serve in more than 150 countries outside the United States, and over half of them are in harm's way every single day. We cannot forget them. Even if they were not our parents, brothers, sisters, or friends, we cannot forget them. For all time, they are what most can only aspire to be, giving, unselfish, the epitome of human love, to lay down one's life so that others may live. Every year at this time, we pause to honor those who are still missing from our ranks. At present, more than 81,600 Americans remain missing from World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Cold War, and the Gulf War, and other conflicts. We should not rest until we achieve the fullest possible accounting of all missing American military members from all wars. We also pay tribute today to all who have worn the uniform and continue to serve their country as civilians. Many veterans act as coaches, teachers, and mentors in their communities, selflessly volunteering their time and expertise. These men and women possess an unwavering belief in the idea of America. No matter where you come from, what you look like, or who your parents are, this is a place where anything is possible. We can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to the more than 650,000 American service members who died in battle or the 1.4 million who were wounded. We can, however, recognize and thank veterans still living today. Closer to home, it's an opportunity to thank those veterans who we see on a daily basis. Good citizens understand and value American institutions. Today's ceremony ought to be one of the year's highlight events in which we are able to gain understanding and demonstrate the value of each of us have for one American institution, the United States military. We often imagine veterans to be grave and gray-haired, but most who have left us were boys or girls when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. There's always someone who's remembering for us. No matter what time of year it is or what time of day, there's always people who visit a cemetery, leave a flag or a wreath, or a flower, or a little rock on a headstone. We still think of you and we miss you every day. I miss my late father and father-in-law every day. You're still with us. We never got over you and we pray for you still. And we'll see you again. We'll meet again. And the living have a responsibility to remember the conditions that led to the wars in which our heroes died. Veterans Day is special in that way. It honors those that served and still live and those that passed, whether in combat or otherwise. Veterans Day is both a remembrance and a day of national mourning, like Memorial Day, yet it's also a national celebration, like Independence Day. For many, not enough. It stands above other, most other notable days. It should be third behind Easter and Christmas or Yom Kippur or Hanukkah. 
Many of our veterans bear the scars of their service to our country, and we are a nation that will keep its commitments to those who have risked their lives for freedom. We urge our citizens to go up to these men and women and shake a hand, give a hug, and give a word of thanks. I ask you to consider volunteering at a veterans hospital or a nursing home. I encourage you to work with your local veterans groups and to help support our troops in the field and their families here at home. All gave some, some gave all. This is a truth we veterans know above all others. It remains with all of us for a lifetime. By being here today and taking time to reflect on the service and sacrifice of our fellow veterans, we demonstrate that this is much more than a catchy, patriotic phrase. It illustrates that we understand. It illustrates that whether through our own service or through the service of others, the truth we veterans know all too well is that no one leaves the military unchanged. For some of us, there are physical injuries that drastically change life as we knew it in the blink of an eye. And for others, the wounds may not be visible, but the pain is still undeniable. It hasn't been an easy journey for brave men and women as we work to overcome the challenges we face as a result of our service. But hey, we didn't become veterans by seeking the easy path. Service before self. Three words that define every person here today who has worn the uniform of this great nation. Each one of us has sacrificed in some form or fashion. And from one veteran to another, I personally thank you for that solemn commitment. And on days like today, a grateful nation would like to thank you for your service as well. And for the Vietnam veterans here in particular, welcome home, brothers and sisters. Twice I came home to a grateful nation. You need to know every day that we're grateful for your service now. One especially powerful inscription on the fairly new American Veterans Disabled and Life Memorial in Washington, D.C. is from the Supreme Allied Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force, General D.Y. D. Eisenhower, like myself, a Kansas boy. Spoken on February 10, 1946, to a group of ill and wounded veterans, which reads, Each one of you bears upon his body the permanent and honorable scars of dangerous service. Service rendered in order that our great nation might continue to live according to the expressed will of its own citizens. History tells us that what makes the United States military effective is not one soldier, sailor, marine, airman, or coast guardsman. It is the sum of the whole that drives victory. It is knowing that in the darkest hour, the person to your left and the person to your right, each has you covered, and you have them covered in return. As veterans yourself, your unmatched dedication to fellow veterans is why I'm humbled to be a part of this group today. Young Americans have been fighting modern overseas wars on behalf of this nation for the last century. We continue to produce veterans, but we also lose veterans at a rapid pace. We're privileged to have several veterans organizations help us cope, unite, bond, and from time to time tell a good story now and then. But throughout the years, warfare has changed. The size and scope of our military has evolved, and our global presence continues to shift. Today, for the first time in my life, Americans may have cause to question whether those who lead our military men and women are as committed to selfless service, God, and country above all else as we rightfully have come to expect. But our commitment to our... But our commitment to our nation's heroes, heroes of all eras, has never wavered. As many of you know, during the transition from service member to civilian, it often feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. But there's no reason for our veterans to bear that burden alone. And that's why we're here today to reconfirm our commitment to the promises we made when we asked our fellow citizens to serve. We will not leave our dead and wounded behind. What they've done for us is too powerful to ignore. We must recognize and not forget what they did for us. 
I'm honored to stand among an elite band of brothers and sisters and salute you for making it possible for all of us to be here, not just today, but every day. Thank you for providing me with the opportunity to speak today and for joining me and honoring the men and women who serve. May the Lord shine his brightest light on each of you and all our nation's veterans. And may God bless the United States of America. I appreciate Colonel Wright for those remarks, spirited and passionate, almost like it's chair, almost like the chairman, but thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for what you do. Thank you, Kevin, for what you did. And thank you for the call to service that each of us still have among this city and among this country. It is much appreciated. So we begin with our of the year awards. And as always, we recognize those folks who have served in the military, and that's great. We love what they've done. Their evidence can be found on their DD-214. But the thing is, what do you do for your community today? And what have you done for your community lately? Our veteran of the year this year is a gentleman who has really defined the word service. His nominee wrote that despite his challenges and loss of multiple family members during his stay at Volunteers of America Manatee Veterans Village, he continually stepped up to carry furniture, unload trucks, clean out units, Encourage fellow veterans to stay positive and move forward on their journey. His ability to share with the other veterans and actively listen to their stories assisted with at least six other formerly homeless veterans being able to transition into permanent housing and find success in overcoming their challenges. He also immediately stepped in to assist with a wonderful project delivering new furniture and replacing the old furniture from the units at the village while other veterans just stood and watched. And on a weekly basis, this veteran would pick up food at the local food banks, deliver it to individuals that did not have transportation in the rural areas of Manatee County, then there are a few of, these are a few of just many examples where our veteran of the year stepped in to better his community. His nominee, his, his nominator, Tricia Sadler, formerly of Volunteers of America, wrote, and I quote, I personally witnessed how this recipient was the first to step up and volunteer for his community, despite the vastness of his own personal challenges. One thing I did not mention, he started out as a homeless veteran. I believe it is that kind of caring for his community that he has personally succeeded because this veteran himself successfully transitioned from the Volunteers of America Manatee Veterans Village into a place of his own. And we all know that he will continue to see beyond himself and lend a helping hand in both official and unofficial situations. Members of the council, members of Manatee County, it is my privilege, my pleasure, and my honor to recognize the Frederick, Dra the Frederick Graves Memorial Award, recognizing the 2021 Manatee County Veteran of the Year to Mr. Timothy Rogers, United States Army, 1976 to 1979. Just before the start of today's ceremonies, Timothy, I got a call from Tim saying he is at work and he could not get out. I like that when a homeless veteran calls and says, I'm at work. 
So the council will be presenting his medal at our upcoming meeting later on this month. Uh, but here or not here, having worked previously at Turning Points, I knew of this veteran, and I am proud to see that he turned himself around and helped turn others' lives around as well. Thank you to his nominator, Tricia Sadler, formerly of Volunteers of America, Manatee Veterans Village. <laughs> Mary Lee. Now, you might not know Mary Lee. She said that that was her government name. But in Manatee County, if you say cookie around town, y'all know exactly who she is. Mira Lee Cookie Egan is an incredible woman and volunteer. Just reading, just reading her letter from American Legion Auxiliary Unit 325 says a lot about her. I will read directly from the letter. She initiated and volunteered as the chairman for the ALA's Girl State Program for the unit. To help raise money, she contacted Reefs Across America. She spent hours researching what she needed to do, and then she got to it. She presented her idea of making Mansion Memorial Cemetery in Ellington, Florida, an official location for Reefs Across America. As a result of that, Cookie was asked to be the location coordinator for Reefs Across America in Ellington, Florida. She received that honor from the national organization of Reefs Across America. She worked diligently finding sponsorships for Reefs. This sister held meetings. She made phone calls. She sent letters to local businesses. She contacted the mayor, the mayor's office, and other dignitaries. She sent press releases to radio stations, newspapers. She contacted managers of local stores, helped set up displays. She was invited to set up a display at the Manatee County Fair to enlighten the visitors. She also set up displays during functions at American Legion Post 325. She gave presentations about Reefs Across America at a city council meeting, the mayor's office, as well as private residential clubhouses from Venice to Ellington to Ruskin. She also coordinated the official ceremony for December 2019 and 2020. She wrote the presentation speech, contacted Lieutenant Dennis Turner of the United States Naval Sea Cadets Maritime Eagles Division to enroll the cadets to present the colors and place the reefs. She designed the program to be printed, called, and sent invitations to gold and blue star families, the mayor, other dignitaries, and arranged for media coverage. And after the 2019 ceremony, she discovered, I wonder where she found the time to do this, but she discovered that there were more than 1,600 grave sites, not the 450 that she was told initially. And in total, over 2,100 reefs were placed between 2019 and 2020. She has received the Volunteer of the Year for, unit, for the unit and for the district in 2020, and for the unit again in 2021. She received the highest honor that the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Florida can bestow. She received the Department Member of the Year in 2020. In all of this, she faced some tragic loss. In late February of this year, her Cookie and her husband contracted COVID. Unfortunately, her husband Jerry succumbed to those conditions. However, with all of that adversity, her strength and her perseverance maintained her obligations as a volunteer. It is absolutely no wonder why we will recognize her today, because we want this lady to pause just for a moment and receive the thanks of her city and her town for the selfless sacrifice that they made. Nominated by American Legion Auxiliary Unit 325, fellow, fellow board members, members of Manatee County, please welcome with me the 2021 Manatee County Veterans Council Auxiliary Member of the Year, Mrs. Mary Lee Cookie Agin.
Wow, um, total surprise. I am speechless for probably the first time. <laughs> um, there are no words to thank you for this honor. I do it from my heart. I do it because my father was a World War II veteran. <laughs> I had to show my shirt. <laughs> And I do it because my husband was a member of the U.S. Coast Guard and because of all of you out here and everyone all over the United States that served our great country. I chose Reese Across America because it honors everyone. In 2020, 1.7 million Reese were placed nationwide on veterans' graves across this United States. There were over 1 million volunteers and one third of those volunteers were children. That's what our mission is. Our mission is to remember the fallen and to honor those who have served and are still serving and their families and to teach our children the value of freedom. I thank you so much for this honor. Our mission as auxiliary, American Legion auxiliary members is service, not self. And we all should honor that mission. So thank you. God bless you. God bless America. And this is for God and country. What might have not gotten into the microphone is that Cookie's father was a proud World War II veteran. And uh, we, we thank him for his service. And we see that service to country above self resides in you as well. Thank you to American Legion Auxiliary Post 325 for the nomination. Our 2021 Civilian of the Year is a friend that I am most familiar with. Nominated by VFW Post 12055, John Browner, John Briner grew up in a family that had a strong military background. His love and respect for veterans started at an early age, and since moving to Florida about 16 years ago, he has dedicated a great deal of money, time, and effort, or as I would like to say, his time, talent, and treasure, toward the support of veterans. In 2008, he opened Ed's Tavern and started a grassroots program to help veterans whenever he could. In 2009, he coordinated with the Lakewood Ranch Community Activities Committee to develop a program to recognize veterans groups and individuals. In 2010, the efforts of that culminated in the first Lakewood Ranch Memorial Day Parade. And over the years, this parade has been the high point of springtime activities in the Lakewood Ranch area, drawing dozens of participants and hundreds of spectators showcasing many members and other veterans, especially the members of 12055. In 2011, he linked up with MOTS, or the Military Operation Troop Support Organization, to help raise funds to ship care packages to those deployed soldiers far from home. Despite selling Ed's Tavern in 2014, and we were a little sad to see that, he kept himself in the forefront of activities in Lakewood Ranch activities that support veterans. In his new establishment, Wolf's Head, which we were very happy to see, he always greets our members and allows us to have a poppy drive collection, says his nominees, when we have these events and routinely donates to the post. The, nominee, the, nominee, the nominators consider themselves fortunate to have this man as an ally and as a friend and feel that all veterans should be able to witness his love and respect for veterans. I have known this gentleman because his community service does not reach just to the veterans. When I first met this, when I first met this recipient, he was at I-9 Sports Sarasota Manatee not only giving his love for veterans, but his love for football and sharing that love, coaching some of our youngest future NFL players. We hope, and I hope, that this award provides that recognition for the service that he brings to veterans in Manatee County, service that has never looked or tasted so good.
nominated by Commander Graham Ellis and Trustee Gil Ruderman of VFW Post 12055. Council members, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome with me the owner of Wolf's Head in Lakewood Ranch and the 2021 Civilian of the Year, Mr. John Briner. Gil, thank you so much for nominating me to this. All the guys from the VFW, and if anybody doesn't know Gil, it's Gil with two L's, okay? <laughs> he, he'll let you know that. Uh, I'm humbled and honored to be here today. Uh, none of us could be here without you guys. All your services that you give to you know, our country. Um, if, if you can get involved with a, a charity, uh, an event, donate your time, you know, monetary goes a long way. VFWs are great. Mots, Heroes Welcome Home. Uh, Reese, uh, I'm lost for words, but your charity we donate to as well. So thank you guys so much. I want to thank my family, and I can't th thank Lori Ruth enough for keeping the Memorial Day Parade going in Lakewood Ranch. Thank you guys so much. God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to rewind a couple of things for my closing remarks. First of all, I would like to have a few members stand. I would like to, I would like to thank my treasurer, Margaret Smelzer. Would she please stand? <laughs> Secretary Tricia Sadler, would she please stand? And a couple who helps to work to make this park stay beautiful, whether we have a ceremony or we just want to take a moment to pause and reflect and remember. Um, our Veterans Monument Park Superintendent, Jim Clocky, would you also please stand? These are the members of my executive team of the Manatee County Veterans Council. And the reason that I get to stand here and smile as brightly as I do is because the hard work is done by the folks that stand behind me, and I cannot thank them enough. Thank you, guys. I would also be remiss today if I did not thank a very special member of my team. In the movie Top Gun, where there's been a maverick, there's always been a goose. And, and for the Manatee County Veterans Council, this past chairman, an absolutely wonderful friend, has humbly been my goose. And the truth of the matter is, is that I could not stand here and arrange all that could be arranged for this ceremony today without his support. He is at home today because he was a little under the weather, but I wanted him to make sure that he received my, both my thanks and your thanks. And so the council recognizes and thanks Donald Courtney, Florida Veterans Hall of Fame, and my vice chairman of the council for putting this event together. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are able, let us stand for the benediction. God, our help in ages past, our hope for things to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. We thank you, Lord, for the things that we sometimes take for granted, the breath in our lungs, the movement in our bodies, and the freedom we have to have a ceremony like this on a beautiful day such as this, to pay respect, give recognition, and pay homage to men and women who raised their right hand and said that I will support and defend the Constitution of a country such as this, the United States of America, the greatest nation on the face of this earth. Teach us every day to stop and pause and remember those veterans, both living and those that you have called home. Help us to remember the families of those veterans who have come home. 
those veterans who are waiting and yet still wait to hear the news of their loved ones coming home. And help us to remember those for whom your servant Abraham Lincoln once said gave the last full measure of devotion. For the values of duty, honor, country, faith, family, and freedom, let us stand in an attitude of semper fidelis and semper paratus, and let us say with one clear, united American voice, this is our country, and this will defend. It is in the strong, mighty, matchless name of yours that we pray these things. We ask this in the name of Jesus. And all people who love freedom shouted, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Veterans Day ceremony. Thank each and every one of you for coming. Thank you to all of our program participants. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Have a great day. day. Thank you.